Hello everyone. Welcome to Gyandut, maintained by Department of College Education, Rajasthan. Today we are going to have a lecture on the stolen boat, a poem by William Wordsworth. I am Dr. Neelo Farkari from Government Emirates College from Women Bikane. William Wordsworth has been considered as one of the renowned poets of the Romantic age. He excelled in his poems dealing with nature. The poem Stolen Boat is an extract taken from William Wordsworth's famous autobiographical poem, The Prelude, Book First. The Prelude is a book-length autobiographical poem by William Wordsworth. It focuses on Wordsworth's spiritual development, which is often, often spurred on in the poem by a surrounding natural environment. In this early passage from The Prelude, the speaker recalls a night when he, as a young boy, steals a boat and rows out into the middle of a lake. Eventually, the boy becomes scared of a huge mountain and rows back to shore. The image of mountain haunts him from then on, then on planting the seeds for a more complex relationship with nature. Wordsworth was influenced by, influenced by nature and so he observed human life with nature's eyes. The poem Stolen Bo Boat tells how nature molded Wordsworth's personality through some kind and severe influences of her. Compton Rickett observed Wordsworth is not merely a poet of nature, he is a prophet of nature. He intellectualizes nature. Boat Stealing Episode from the Prelude the poem Stolen Boat begins with a pictorial description of countryside where a 10-year-old boy finds a little boat near a lake on one summer evening. The boat is tied to a willow tree. The boy, un uh, the boy unties it and steps into it and starts rowing the boat along the lake. He drives, derives immense pleasure while rowing the boat. At the same time, he gets anxious because he feels that he has done a dishonest deed by stealing a boat. His conscience brings in him guilty feeling. Here the poet has beautifully described the mental state of a small boy. And in the next passages of the poem, the poet transports us to the dream world where a boy, the boy is all alone in a beautiful, calm and lovely lake which is surrounded by huge mountains. The beautiful and haunting atmosphere of the moonlit night arouses both fancy and fear in the poet. In the boy, Wordsworth has employed beautiful, simple and realistic images in the poem. So the poem, One summer evening, led by her, I found a little boat tied to a willow tree within a rocky cove, its usual home. Straight, I unloosed her chain and stepping in pushed from the shore. It was an act of steel and troubled pleasure. Nor without the voice of mountain echoes did my boat move on. So one summer evening, nature led the poet to a willow tree where a boat was tied. The boat was alluring and the poet decided to take it for a ride. The experience was thrilling but the poet could not spurn the fact that he was doing. What he was doing was wrong. He called it a troubled pleasure. Leaving behind her still on either side, small circles glittering idly in the moon until they melted all into one track of sparking light. But now, like one who rose, proud of his skill to reach a chosen point with an unanswering line, I fixed my view upon the summit of a craggy ridge. The horizon's utmost boundary far above was nothing but stars and the grey sky. As the poet propelled forward, the stars and moons casted their glistening glow on the water surface and they all melted into a single track of sparkling light. Rowing forward, he fixed his views on the highest point of a rocky ridge to move in an unanswering and straight track. She was an elfin pinnac. Lustily, I dipped my oars into the silent lake. As I rose upon the stroke, my boat went heaving through the water like a swan when from behind that craggy steep till then the horizons bound a huge peak, black and huge, as if with voluntary power instinct upreared its head, I struck and struck again. The environment created beautiful scenery and the poet could 
not help but think of the boat as a fairy as the boat heaves through the water the boat the poet compares it to a swan gliding gracefully the poet's buoyant ride was a uh, sailing smoothly until a black and huge mountain appeared and obstructed his views of the stars and growing still in nature and green shape towered up between me and the stars and still for it seemed with purpose of its own and measured motion like a living thing strode after me with trembling oars i turned and through the silent water stole my way back to convert of the willow tree there in her mooring place i left my bark as the poet rode forward the mountain seemed to chase him it frightened him and awakened his conscience no longer able to enjoy the ride and disregard this feeling of guilt and fear the poet with trembling oars turned and wandered back the willow trees convert and through the meadows homeward went in grave and serious mood but after i had seen the spectacle that spectacle for many days my brain worked with a dim and undetermined sense of unknown moods of being over my thoughts their hunger darkness call it solitude or blank desertion no familiar shapes remain no pleasant images of free of sea of sky no colors of green afields but hues but hues and mighty forms that do not live like living men moved slowly through the mind by day and were a trouble to my dreams he left back the boat in its place and set off towards his house in a grave and serious mood the sight that he had witnessed haunted haunted his nightmares and replaced what the pleasant images of trees and colored green fields with the hues and mighty forms of the mountains this mountain was his conscience he was plagued by guilt and that very emotion overpowered all his thoughts and solitude in the concluding part of the poem william wordsworth has described the influence of the hue speak on the boy as a 10 year old boy after reaching the shore runs homeward through the meadows in serious and grave mood as if he had been he has been scolded by his teacher and guided nature he feels the seriousness of what he has experienced and to which he cannot give a concrete shape because the sight of the peak awed him wordsworth addresses the universal idol of wisdom and spirit he says that this universal soul is the cause for the eternal motion and force behind all forms and images of this world wordsworth adds that this same soul right from the poet's childhood this universal soul which is manifested through nature helped the poet in purifying his feelings and his thoughts the same universal soul purified the poet by a stern discipline during the moments of pain and fear this is how the poet recognized man's grandeur through the workings of nature which is manifestation of the universal soul wordsworth is thankful to the nature that she has imposed her discipline upon him and aroused fear and reverence in him and even after indulging in sinful pleasure the poet could not be disregard his conscience and the following guilt that surfaced so strongly that it appeared in the form of a daunting mountain chasing him this one event stirred a significant change in him and reformed his personality thank you that's all for the poem thank you so much so here is the contact details of our officials thank you thank you so much students